And so without delay, please welcome Jonathan Smith as the 26th coach of Spartan football. I am excited, excited to be here. Uh, similar to Alan, I want to thank some people as well. Start with you for being here today in this beautiful setup. First time in here. Uh, been here 48 hours and continue to be so impressed with all I've seen on campus and here. I want to thank the Board of Trustees, Interim President uh, Woodruff, for entrusting me to lead this program. And for in particular, I do, I do want to thank Alan. A lot of what he just spoke about, I completely agree with. Initial conversations, vision, uh, alignment, the fit. Um, we spoke um, throughout this process. I thought he did a great job on a professional side. Important to me as the process went, not to be a distraction for either side. And I thought he did an outstanding job of that. Cannot, cannot think of enough. Definitely want to thank uh, Oregon State University, all that that place has done for me and my family. Um, leaving there obviously was an important, difficult decision, but I go back to, again, the fit of this place and cannot be exci more excited about, about moving forward. That place will always be special to me. I want to thank the people of this community in regards to reaching out and make a warm welcome for not only me, but for my family, even just the last 48 hours, the opportunity to sit down with Coach D yesterday in my office and talk about the place, the text messages that I've gotten from other head coaches here at this university welcoming me and my family, talking about their own kids and cannot wait to connect them, learn about uh, the schools and, and whatnot. So I cannot thank you for the outpouring of support from this community already. Cannot wait to dive into it uh, in, the, in the near future. Also, most importantly, and I thought I did this gonna be tough, but I gotta thank this crew right, right in front of me. These decisions are not easy. Um, I wanna chase championships at the highest level, but at the same time, create an atmosphere for my family to be special. And uh, that's why I go back to this fit. I appreciate you guys, Candace, Robert, Bella, and Charles, for coming along and believing in this ride that we're undertaking. Uh, so thank you. I thought I would start just like I started the team meeting yesterday, getting to know these guys, first time around them, 9 a.m. yesterday, and really just telling my story. Walked up in front of them and told my story like this. Jonathan Smith, 44 years old, Born in Pasadena, California, Huntington Hospital, but about a mile from the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl. Grew up in Pasadena, went to Glendora High School. At that point, playing high school football, it grew in me. I wanted to coach football. Loved it, had a great experience, got toward the end of my senior year, knew I wanted to chase this dream of coaching, and I thought I could do it at the college level to learn more and more. Ended up getting an opportunity at Oregon State University to walk on there. Thought would be I go walk on there at the highest level I could get to is just learn about ball and all of that. Mike Riley, the head coach at the time, looked me in the eye and said, yeah, you're going to be paying for it, but you'll be treated just like everybody else in that locker room. The man stuck to his word, had an unbelievable experience there, learned a ton, friendships, all of that. First year I walk into Oregon State, my first position coach to get exposed to this great game, guy by the name of Paul Christ. Paul Christ was the offensive coordinator and uh, quarterback coach, opened my eyes to schematics, which I was desperately wanting to learn about. He treated me awesome for my first couple of years. Two years into it, Mike Riley leaves, and we're going through a transition. You're going to hear a little bit about that. We're going through a transition. Again, speaking as if to the players, transition, Dennis Erickson comes in, ended up winning a few games the next couple of years, knew I wanted to get into coaching. Dennis Erickson allows me to start my coaching career after that, being a graduate assistant, graduate assistant right there at Oregon State. Two years of being a graduate assistant, I got my first opportunity to be a full-time coach at the University of Idaho. I want to thank Nick Holt for that opportunity. Learned a ton from him, experienced that. Was at Idaho for six years, went through three different head coaches at that time. 
transition, different head coach, schematics, all of that. I learned a bunch through that experience of six years. Got to the point, though, I wanted to continue to progress in the, in the, the profession. Went to the University of Montana. Robin Flugrad gives me my first opportunity to call plays, be an offensive coordinator. Loved Missoula, Montana for two years. And then I call, got a call after that um, by a guy named Chris Peterson. Chris Peterson's down at Boise State, gives me opportunity to be a quarterback coach down there. Went down to Boise, two years there, great experience. Met a bunch of good coaches at the same time and players. And then after two years, Chris Peterson decides to transition to the University of Washington, thinks enough of me to bring me along, goes to the, go to the University of Washington as the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. Again, transition, new culture, learned a ton from those four years. After a couple of years of transition, building the culture in our third year, we went to the college football playoff. In 2016, sounds like we were following a university the year before in the college football playoff. Um, a great, great experience of winning the Pac-12 championship, and that led to an opportunity to go back to the alma mater and take on this idea of being a head coach. Place was, uh, got there six years ago. A place was not having a ton of success, had some turmoil, different things going on, and was excited about diving into it, learning the players, changing the culture, creating a space where people could do their best work, and we dove into it at a... Uh, a lot of great memories, connections, recruiting, brought a staff down there that we put together that worked uh, for six years straight. Seven out of the ten coaches there for those six years were there the entire time. You get ten position coaches, seven of them were there with me for six years. And then, like Alan mentioned, the last couple of years had a little bit more success. Got to the point where this end of the year conversations, and I kept coming back to this idea of playing at the highest level, playing in a place where you could fit and be the type of dad, father, husband you want to be, let alone for myself and, and for the staff want to create. And that leads me all the way to this point, standing in front of you guys now, the team yesterday. That's a little bit of my story. Um, let me tell you a little bit why uh, I'm so excited about Michigan State. I think, again, we go back to this fit. Let's talk schematics. Alan mentioned it. Yes, we want to make a physical brand of football on both sides of the both sides of the ball, but at the same time, it leads to an innovative offense in regards to, yeah, we're going to take a chance once in a while, uh, make it physical, create explosive plays, defensively make it hard on the defense, not just by the physicality we play with, but the schematics uh, on that end. I think Michigan State's a place where you can develop. The, Michigan State's not just diving into a team meeting yesterday, diving into the idea of being a program a program of substance on and off the field, a program where we're going to dive into lives and, and beyond just being able to teach them how to be in the deep third in coverage or run a, run a 15-yard in route. We want to be a place of substance on and off the field. Uh, we are going to be process-oriented, and this takes a minute. You stick to a process January all the way through December. You stick to a process Sunday to Saturday. You stick to a process to start a practice at the end of practice. And I felt Michigan State fit that and allowed for a lot of that. I think Michigan State's a national brand. I know football's a big deal around here, but there's a lot of big-time deals around here in sports. I'm looking at Coach Izzo right now. Can't, what, can't wait. I've never gone to a college ice hockey game. Cannot wait to go down and check some of that out. I thought the fit was good as well is because, let's face it, there's an in-state rivalry, and I appreciate in-state rivalries. I think those things are meaningful. It's a the great thing about college football is to have a rivalry like that. Every spot I've mentioned earlier in my career, I know what that, what that is like in being able to compete in that year round. And so that will, again, mean a ton. I'm excited, again, to deeply dive in and connect in with these players. Priority number one, and through conversations with Alan, he knows this, is about the current roster right here the current roster, and then we're going to take the opportunity again tomorrow to dive into these lives, learn about them, learn their stories, why they chose Michigan State. I cannot wait to, to start on that. Not to sugarcoat, recruiting is vitally important. We're going to put the staff together and dive into that as well. But you go out and recruit, you got to know what you currently are working with. And, and again, retaining that, that roster will be vitally, vitally important. I've got confidence in this move. I cannot overstate 
the idea of transition a family all the way over here, I cannot overstate how important and confident I think we are in this thing. I shouldn't say think. We are confident in this thing and so excited to be here and really get started. This is a big day. You get on stage, you got the, uh, the press conference to go. We've got to answer some questions with the press. We've got a basketball game to go to tonight. I'm looking forward to diving into these players and getting in that meeting room and setting plans and, and really getting started because it's going to take some work. I think a lot of us in this room understand this is going to take some work, and I am definitely excited and up for the challenge and opportunity that's in, that's in front of us. I'm going to stop there and just echo again. I can't thank this community enough for the warm welcome. I am fired up to get going, and let's go do this thing. Go great. want to go first. <laughs> Coach Fred Human, NBC here in, in uh, Lansing. First thing is, did you own a green tie or did you have to get one? Yeah, I will speak the truth all the time to you. I definitely had to go get okay. one. Yep. And I talked about how much the, my, my family's meant to me and help. I needed to get a little help and she still thinks I need a little help with this tie right now. My wife was huge and okay, put this on. Clarify. My bigger question is, you talked when you landed at the airport Sunday about the the culture here, the history, and what you called the brand, which you just referred to. Mm -hmm. You're only the second head coach I can think of in the last half century that did not have a direct Michigan State tie here. Mm -hmm. Are you going to study the history? Is that even important in building what you want to build here? Yeah, definitely important. Um, definitely want to dive in and learn. I continue to learn each day, but more and more. I think the I, I'll say it this way too, on just the, even the former players and understanding the history and the big time players and championships that have won here, that's going to be important for me to learn, but also make sure we got engaging, welcoming back uh, from former players. And so I look forward to learning that part. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Uh, welcome, Jonathan. Um, I'm wondering about the decision to leave your alma mater. I mean, that's obviously a very personal place for you. What made this the most attractive way to get you away? Um, I thought a lot of the what I value, which wherever I'm at, I, I'm going to value these things. Again, the family piece, the community network, a passionate fan base, the opportunity to win, uh, the resources available to win, the community that is invested to win. I think all of that was, was here. Uh, and so that was brewing in my mind. Hey, Jonathan Metlins with NLive. I was wondering, you, you talked about um, recruiting, and I was wondering how you plan on assembling your staff with, you know, being you've got a lot of West Coast guys to, to try and, you know, yep. get Midwest connections, and do you, um, uh, do you anticipate any, any carryover from the previous staff? Yep. Uh, uh, the intention is to build a staff with great men that are great teachers, that are elite people, that will invest in the lives of the players. Yes, there, there's a crew that has been with me for a long time. There's a lot of the reason I'm standing up in front of you. And so, yes, they'll be a part of, part of that. The intention also coming over, understanding. That's, you know, it's not an elephant in the room. I have a lack of uh, deep ties to the Midwest. Cannot wait to get engaged and dial into the high school players our high school coaches in Michigan. At the same time, a staff reflecting some background there will be an intention on this staff. Um, there are some good coaches that were, that were currently here. Um, those people, a few of those guys I will be talking to. And so we will take some time to put this together because you got to get these things right, the right mix fit. But yes, some continuity of what I've been around can speak the language from the get-go. Midwest ties will be in attention with some of the others and then exploring uh, some of the coaches here. Hello, Coach. Congratulations and welcome. Lindsay Huddleston, Sports Psychology Solutions, SPS. Coverage is focused on mental toughness and mental health for athletes. With that, can you give your perspective on mental health as it relates to athletes in this current time in college sports? Yep. Uh, I think it's a uh, very important topic, very important to be able to recognize, to remove the stigma sometimes that can be around mental health because there's no question we got to play 
mentally and physically tough, right? But there's a difference there when it goes to, into mental health. Um, excited about learning the resources around here and removing any stigma that our current players, our future players would have in regards to mental health. Jonathan Ray, I apologize. Stephen Brooks, 24-7 Sports. When you took over Oregon State as a first-time head coach, I'm wondering what were sort of your initial steps that you look back and like that you think can be repeatable here that you might want to implement? And maybe what did you learn from that experience that you might want to change this time around, especially with the changes in college football, NIL yep. transfers, things like that that weren't around when you took over that job? Yep. Uh, one thing I learned uh, very quickly, uh, this idea of building trust. When you take over a program, walked into that team, team room, and I didn't know many of them. I hadn't been in any homes to not just know them, but their family network and those that are, that are there, knowing their story. Um, I learned that, that as soon as possible, that is priority number one to, to learn this roster. Not just what they look like on tape, but what their story is. I think that you can coach these guys as hard as you care about these guys, and then they know that. And so I think building trust from the get-go will be vitally important on that. I think a clear and concise message of how and why we're going to do things is really important from the get-go. Um, Buy-in, belief, that's just not free. And so really spelling that out of why we're going to be approaching things and why it's going to help them on and off the field, why it's going to help us win and win big games and ultimately try to win championships. Larry Lage from the Associated Press. What will be some catchphrases or mantras that your players will hear you say so much that they'll hear it in their head? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think from the start, we're going to, you know, low ego, high output, um, selfless. I think, I think football is the ultimate team game. Walking in there to these roster sizes now, getting over 120 some odd guys. There's 11 guys on the field. Uh, I think it's the ultimate team game. No shot at Coach Izzo over here, but you play hoop, man. You put four guys over here and let LeBron play one-on-one. -on -one. That can take place up schematically and all of that. <laughs> Football's a little different. And so it's the ultimate team game on that of being selfless and being a great teammate. Hey, Jonathan, over here again. Not to dive into the roster too much, obviously, but you're, you were a quarterback, and that's where your background is. You have a couple guys yesterday declare their intent to enter the portal. I'm just wondering, you know, Broad, how you how you plan to address that position moving forward? Yeah, um, I, I think we are going to run a style of play that the quarterback can have some real, real success. I think being the starting quarterback at Michigan State is an unbelievable opportunity, and that opportunity is there for who is in our locker room uh, starting in January. I'll say this, not just specifically about the quarterback position, but in general, this day and age in college football, there's opportunities there in regards to you know, weighing your options, fresh starts somewhere else, all of the current players unsettling the last year, and so that's not uh, – well, how I would say, not totally surprising for guys to maybe want to explore an option or two. And I get that. And we really support those that want to be in that locker room on, in January. I got a firm belief we can hit the ground running and do something special. Jack, Jack Ebling, the drive with Jack and press pass. Uh, Jonathan, not that long ago, 2010 through 2016, five times in six years, Michigan State won 11 or more games. How comforting is that to know instead of being in a program that had had a winning season for 28 years, and how much might you use uh, the input from Mark D'Antonio, hi Mark, uh, as a comfort and as a resource as you build this? Yeah, yeah. I hope Coach D, uh, awesome conversation yesterday, spoke with him on the phone on Saturday when it was announced. Um, definitely plan on leaning on him, because you're right, he did it at the highest level. The idea of sustainability and development me and him were in cahoots on how we want to approach this thing. Now, this is a, a little bit different uh, landscape from 2010 to 20 and how this has changed, and so you've got to be able to navigate. But I think there are some core principles of development and recruiting um, that can last a lifetime and plan on doing it. Maddie Kenny, Detroit News over here. Um, how much did the Pac-12 kind of all the conference realignment and everything that's happening, how much did that play, play uh, or have an impact in your decision to come to Michigan State, you know, Big Ten school, where there's just more overall stability? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not a major factor. Like, I, I tried to describe it to, to my team 
the, look, the instability, conference realignment, all of this stuff, there was some brewing in me of the idea of going somewhere if the fit was right and just being really selective on that. And so, yeah, other opportunity here or there, wasn't interested, just the more engaged in conversation with Michigan State, I got more and more excited about it. Um, I do. Look, you know me, I'm a West Coast guy and all that Pac-12 conference, the championship, I, I think it is kind of sad in general for that thing to blow up with the history of that place. I go back to where I was born and raised, going to Rose Bowl and Big Ten's playing the Pac-12 and all of that, but I'm genuinely excited to be a part of the Big Ten part of this place. Um, and so that excitement just grew on me. Jonathan, Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Um, I had heard you mention that you would watch some of the games from Michigan State during the process. Uh, kind of what did you see that maybe with the roster and with the, the program that, that enticed you with this job? And, and how do you feel, like when you were watching that, do you feel like you can move it forward in what areas? Yep. You know, some of the reasons we watched them, we played the University of Washington. Michigan State played them earlier in the season. We played them week 11, so that game was, you know, one to be diving into, and we, we did that. Um, I watched not the entire, but a, a good amount of the game against Rutgers, actually. Rutgers, miserable rain. I told the team this, too, but the idea they had a great chance and in that game, just couldn't finish it. And I talked about the character of this team then because later, Indiana game, that game is tight, and this – the, the season had been long at that point, and there had been unsettling all of that. The character of these guys continue to buy in and go and find a way to finish at the end. That showed me a team that's got some character to it, uh, watching that tape. 